Hello! Welcome to Ask the Unicorn. I'm Ahura Z, and uh, you're on the air live with us. Uh, this is Kazi. Hello. Today is March 12th, <laughs> and this is episode 24. <clears throat> Yay. Yes, today is March 12th. This is episode 24. Uh, we are hoping to have a good time tonight. Um, I know that there have been some pretty neat questions that have come in over the week, and I'm hoping to answer them all. We had quite the adventure uh, just a few nights ago. Uh, I'm involved in a film that is, uh, I'll put it this way, kind of a zombie film. And uh, I get to play one of the heroes. There's a lot of them in the film. And uh, we did a kind of an impromptu investigation at uh, one of the Masonic lodges. I won't go too much into that tonight. However, I will answer any kind of questions that you have as long as they are pertaining to the metaphysical, the spiritual, the mystical, and the paranormal. I will answer them very, very simply. If there is a problem that comes up in your life that has to do with these areas, I will give you the quickest possible solution. And if there is something that will benefit you, I will get you to it. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about something that I'll be doing this weekend. It's a holistic mystic... <laughs> A Holistic Mystic Fair, and that's taking place this Saturday in Maine, and that's at the Le Club Calumet in um, Augusta, Maine. That's from 10 to 4 p.m. There's a $5 entrance fee. There are going to be a lot of very talented people there, and um, I'm doing a presentation, <clears throat> and I'm doing a presentation on, guess what, psychic self-defense. It's what my forte is, and that'll be happening at about 10.45 a.m., so if you're in the area, uh, please stop by and uh, perhaps I can answer even more questions. Now, uh, we'll get to the um, chat room in a moment, but I, I'd like to say something. One of the things that I don't like is when people pick on other people. Um, if you have to bully someone, then that means that your life is worth nothing, uh, pretty much. And uh, you should really readjust your thinking. And hopefully you will stop doing that kind of thing. You'll stop bullying people because it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help uh, the person being bullied, nor does it help the bully. It just makes the bully look even worse. So uh, I would suggest being kind to one another. And if you know someone is being bullied, you should tell. And if you uh, are around people that are bullies, you should just not hang out with them. That's the best way to teach them. Okay? Um, <clears throat> you... You can argue with them, you can try to convince them of what it is that your, your point of view is, but the best thing for you to do is just get away from them. If they're alone, then they won't have anybody to bully. And, you know, as long as you're hanging out with a bully, you're pretty much enabling them to bully other people. So the best thing for you to do is just leave them alone, get away from them, tell other people to stay away from them, and let them spend some time alone for a while until they figure out that you're not supposed to bully people. All right. Um... That being said, before I get into ranting about such things, we're going to go to a chat room to see what kind of questions we have this evening. What do you got? Squirt, first question. <laughs> Squirt <laughs> question. You can just read, write, and speak, right? Uh, first question comes from Marie. I had a dream that something evil was invading what Tim and I do. I kept my composure and did not have any fear. In one part of my dream, I was in a room with what looked like a demon, very ugly, but again, no fear. In another part, I was in a car with one of our daughters and a friend of hers. I was sitting in between them. They kept eyeing one another, and our daughter, who was sitting to the right of me, stated to the other one, Oh, here, this gum is stale. Could you throw it out for me? <laughs> but I noticed that it was not gum. It was a chunk of her tongue in which she bit, bit off and handed it to her friend to throw out. They did not see that I noticed, and then I woke up. Is there something your daughter's not telling you, perhaps? That's what it sounds like to me. And uh, if there's something that needs to be said that's not being said, then uh, it could be detrimental to your personal relationship or even uh, things that need to uh, go smoothly. Because remember, you're doing a lot these days, so you really don't need any type of interference in what it is that you're doing. So hopefully you can all keep a nice open line of communication. That's really what that's about. Okay, so maybe ask your daughter if there's something that she needs to talk about and then make sure that everybody that's in your circle is communicating well. 
and I think that you'll avoid any type of problem. Hope that helps you out. Hello. It's good to hear from you, Marie. <laughs> she says she couldn't call because of where they are located. The reception was right, right, I understand. in and out. I understand. So. This next question is from Lynn Meadows. She says, my best friend's one true love killed himself. Now he follows her around. She needs to let go. He is not the nicest dead person I've ever spoken to. <laughs> when she stayed here, I dreamt he was trying to talk me out of telling her he should go into the light, and I awoke with bruises on my arms. I got him out of my house. What should I tell her to do other than smudging, which was done? Um, this type of a situation is kind of precarious because, he, as you said, she's not letting him go. So it's, it may not be that he wants to hang around. It may be that she's the one holding on to him. A lot of times we villainize a person without knowing the whole story. There's always two sides to everything. Okay, so uh, what I might suggest is that if your friend is going to harbor this particular type of spirit, perhaps she is the one that needs to get out of your house. Okay, so um, it's... It's kind of interesting the dynamic here a lot of times we we feel that the person that we like is the one that's being victimized but but like you said she's hanging on to him so she can't be being victimized that much so maybe you should have a talk with her and say look you know um, uh, this is what's happening in this house you know and it's because you're not willing to let go of this person you guys have to get rid of things that that uh, uh, may be attached to him. Now, if she's not ready to do that, there's really nothing you can do other than kind of distance yourself there. But um, uh, if she's willing to do that, the best way to do that is to start with all of the physical representations and then work your way to the mental representations, which would be, which would be her detaching from him and thought. You may not think that it's the nicest person, but if she's keeping him around, obviously she thinks differently than you do so <clears throat> let's look at both sides of the coin and uh, see if you can come to a better answer and if you need help there are people in your area that are capable of making a negative entity go away <clears throat> but first you're going to have to deal with your friend okay don't just put her on the side of the victim because you like her she's holding on She's got to let go. Okay? Hope that helps you out. You can always give me a call, too, and we can go more in depth with that. Uh, All right. If you'd like to give us a call, our phone number is area code 207-347-5686. Hmm. It's really an interesting dynamic, you know, um, <clears throat> when it comes to someone who has moved on and the person, they still have kind of a relationship because... One person is not willing to let the other one go, and at the same time, perhaps they're not willing to let the person go as well, the person who's deceased. But the main thing is this. I think that we preoccupy ourselves a little bit too much with death these days, you know, because uh, everyone wants to know what happens to a person after they've gone or, or what's going on with the person after they've gone. And it's mostly our thought that the ones that are living that can get in the way of what needs to happen with those that have gone on. You know, we can come up with different terms. We can call it crossing over or whatever we want to call it. But the bottom line is this. Even if you love the person, the person is not here anymore. And you need to face that fact. You've got to deal with it and allow them to go to where the, the creators of the universe need for them to be. And if they were in pain, it's definitely going to be a better place. So why would you want them to stay here in pain? So you have to kind of question yourself, you know, and am I the type of person that wants to hinder someone that has been in pain so that I can see them always in pain? Or should I just, you know, relinquish my grip on them and allow them to go where they need to go so that they can have a better time and a better life and a better existence? You know, and at the same time, uh, if you're getting in the way of a person's relationship and you're not equipped to deal with the, re with the uh, repercussions that could take place, you really just shouldn't. You should let people who are experienced and people who have the predilection to deal with the spiritual deal with that instead of trying to play the go-between or, 
or, or the person that you know wants something for a person so you wind up hurting yourself stay out of it that's probably the best thing that you can do and talk to that person and say look you're the one that's holding this person here, this this being here so you need to let them go that comes up an awful lot put your energy in the place that it can deal with the living okay not always not always with the dead I understand when a person leaves you know sometimes it's, it's very grievous I get it and you need time to grieve but if you're through that time of grieving and you're just holding on because of whatever you really need to examine yourself readjust your thinking help those that are around you, you readjust their thinking too because there's other people that constantly want to come up and remind you of someone that died it's the most ridiculous thing ever you know, 10 years have gone by and you're still talking about this person as if they've left just yesterday. You know, so we all have to learn to kind of grow up spiritually. And you know, if you take all of that energy that you're putting into a person that is deceased and put it into people that are living, that are around you, you won't have regrets when they do go or if they do go. Because you know that you've given them all of the attention and all of the time and thought that you possibly could have while they're alive. That's the best thing that you can do. Let the deceased go to where the deceased go. For goodness sake, stop getting in the way with all of the emotions and the, the forever crying. I get it. I, I, I understand. I too have lost people. But you know something? If I know that they were in pain, my prayers go towards making sure that they are in better places now. And that's what you should all do. And if that person hangs around, even after you have allowed them to go, and after you have let them to go and asked them to go, that's up to that person. But if they cause you harm, then you need to call someone that can help. All right, I hope that helps you all out. What do we got next? This next question is from Elise. She says, sometimes I see people walking down the street in front of me and then they disappear. What kind of phenomena is this? <laughs> they look very real and physical. Well, uh, it goes back to what I was telling you before, Elise. You have that type of vision. You may be seeing an energy, uh, an energy projection, or it may be a spirit that is going from one place to another and you just happen to catch that particular glimpse. You know, uh, vision... <clears throat> Vision is very, very unpredictable uh, in most cases, unless you've developed it to a point that you know what it's going to do, when it's going to do it. You know, but um, it just sounds like you, you are experiencing a phenomenon based upon your type of vision. You see them sometimes and sometimes you don't. They may come in a gateway and out of another. Gateway is one of those words that I, I don't like using, but we're so ill-equipped when it comes to language sometimes you know there's portal there's gateway there's rip in a fabric of time and space <laughs> yeah there's a chapa eye <laughs> <laughs> you know so i have to use one of those so you gotta excuse me if every once in a while well most of the time but every once in a while i sound kind of sci-fi it's because you know we don't have great things to actually give you the impact of what it is that you're seeing um, other than the words that I can use. So forgive me if I if I seem as though I'm using kind of a, a pat term. I don't mean to. I really don't. But you know your vision, Elise. Use your vision to find out <clears throat> not necessarily what it is that you're seeing, but why you're seeing it. Okay? All right. What have you got for me next? The next question is from Amethyst. Some people in my neighborhood put flashing symbols on my roof that smell like burnt flesh. The odor is so intense it is difficult to breathe. How can I get rid of the odor? I would be more concerned with getting rid of the people that are like putting symbols on your roof that are flashing and smelling like burnt flesh. Um, I would be very, very interested in knowing where it is that you are. <clears throat> that this happens. Does anyone else smell it or is it just you? Um, the symbols they are putting up. What type of symbols that they're actually putting up there? What time does it actually happen? 
Um, is there a, a uh, pattern to it? How often does it happen? You know, so um, it's interesting that, it, that you would say that it smells like burnt flesh uh, and it's on your roof. You know, so uh, perhaps you can give us a little more because uh, it sounds pretty interesting. I, I, I'd like to know more about it. In other words, I'd like to know what type of symbols, what do they look like? Uh, I don't know. Other than that, I can just tell you, you know, I don't. maybe they're aliens. <laughs> you know, maybe they are just very evil people that think it's funny to do what it is that they're doing. I don't necessarily doubt your your experience and I'm not saying that at all what I'm saying is I I need to know a little a little bit more what kind of symbols um, where are they placed are they placed directly overhead is it over a certain compartment in your home okay we have to get all of the physicality out before we start dealing in things of the paranormal because uh, flashing symbols have to be put there by something Okay, and the way that you said it, it says you said that you know sometimes they will put symbols there. I want to know how they put them. Did you see them put them there? And if you did see them put them there, did what time, what were you feeling at the moment? What were you thinking at the moment? Did they notice you watching them put them there? All of these questions have to be answered, and I can answer them all for you if you just give me the pattern uh, or something uh, that could uh, help me fix your problem, or at least. Um, give you some answers to your problems. Sounds something, sounds almost like something uh, of the terrestrial. It really does. And if that's the case, then you're dealing with a third or fourth dimensional type of a being. You know, but if it's uh, a spiritual being, that's something quite different. And depends on the type of symbols. Okay. Uh, I hope that helps you out. What have you got for me now? Um, that's all I have right now. You can rant away about bullying people. Yeah, I don't like bullies. Um, when I was in school, I was bullied, and then I learned to fight and <laughs> ceased to be bullied. <laughs> you know, but not everybody has the propensity for fighting. I just, I just had a predilection for the martial arts. You know, so uh, if you're being bullied, my suggestion is for you not to allow them to alienate you, or not to allow yourself to be alienated. Do something that is going to show your bully that you're not afraid to let everybody know exactly what that bully is doing. And I don't care if the bully is just at school uh, for your children or if it is an adult that is, that is bullying another adult. If you see something like that, we have this propensity to want to stay out of other people's business and I can respect that. You really don't need to go and be nosy all the time. But if you see that somebody's in danger, don't just walk by, for instance, Okay, today, I, I really seldom watch the news, okay, because to me, the different news stations are just full of crap, and I hope that somebody is involved with the news that is listening to me right now. I think it's the most morbid and depressing thing ever to sit and listen to any type of the news. I, this is what you hear when you watch the news. <clears throat> this is blah, blah, blah. It's because I can't say anybody's name. Um... Today, we're going to tell you something depressing. And after that, we're also going to let you know about depressing. We're going to tell you something horrible, and then we're going to expect for you to have a positive day. But in the meantime, we're probably going to piss you off, so we might as well tell you something depressing so you don't get too pissed off because you are depressed. And now in other news, did you know that the most depressing thing in the world is this particular news station? Awesome. You know, so I really don't like to watch it, but every once in a while, because I'm in a place where they decide that they need to get their daily quota of depressing, depressing news, uh, I look up and there it is, sure as day, there's a situation where there was six people beating up on one guy, okay? And the only people that actually moved to help or do anything was just a couple of piece, people and two of them were, it was girls that decided that they were going to, you know, stand up for someone and at least try to help. They wound up getting beat pretty badly themselves, but all the same, there's six people beating up on one person. There's a train place full of people. Nobody moved. W what is that? 
For those six people that did that, what a bunch of cowards. Seriously. Coward, 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 coward. And you got to know this. You can believe in karma or not believe in karma. But believe you me, or at least accept this idea, karma is real. And if you put someone in that particular type of a situation, you've got to think about what's going to come for you. And for those people that stood around, you might as well as beat up, might as well have beat up on that person yourself. Because if you see a crime being committed or you see a travesty being done and you do nothing, then that makes you just as guilty as the people that are doing it. So I wasn't going to really do that, but I, you know, I can't stop myself from talking about certain things, you know. So <clears throat> if you see someone being bullied, if you don't want to be a part of that karma, say something, do something, okay? Just do something. There's always someone out there that is the ugliest kid in the room that decides to call everybody else ugly. And sometimes you just need to maybe be on the side of the person that's being continuously bullied and say, look, how about we just move you out of this situation? Chances are you're going to draw a little bit of fire yourself. But hey, aren't we America? Aren't we used to doing that? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? We're the ones with the muscle, so you're supposed to push the car out of the road? We get all up in arms. What is it we hear constantly? Amber alerts, um, other stuff like that. You know, and you got all oh, these yeah. people that are saying, you know, we need to care for one another. Well, guess what? Stopping bullying is caring for one another. You're being real at that particular moment because you wouldn't like it if you were the one being bullied and nobody decided to help you out. I know what that feels like. <clears throat> so, no, I don't let people be bullied. I do what I can to make to remedy the situation. If I can get out of it without, you know, being punched or having to punch myself, I'm all about that. But I'm not going to let that particular caution stop me from speaking up or stop me from getting in the way or stop me from stopping that person from bullying someone else. I don't like it. No one should like it. It shouldn't be tolerated in this country. We are in the 21st century, yet it is still happening. How, how Neanderthalistic is that? So, uh, I'm going to try to keep my, my uh, uh, ranting down and uh, return to the calm and self-assured Horizi Deliza. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, listen, if you'd like to call and uh, discuss something that is happening to you, uh, that is going on. Uh, you can give us a call at area code 207-347-5686 or you can go on our Facebook page and uh, post your question and we'll be more than happy to answer it. Now I know that there are a lot of people out there that, that have questions from time to time and you don't really know how to formulate them, which is why I usually suggest that you write your questions down. It's the best way to formulate your question and to remember it. Okay, We do the show every Wednesday night and uh, when we're doing it on the radio, uh, we have the benefit of being able to play music. But and I could probably do the same thing. But then you'd have to just kind of look at us, list, look at us, bobbing our heads with you, you know, while we're listening to the music. So uh, we're working on some stuff right now. We're still pretty new to this television thing or this uh, uh, internet TV thing, and we're getting better and better and better at it. But you got to be patient with us, and we're working on it. So. I'm going to say this. For those of you that really don't want to hear, hear any depressing news, can you guys like stop watching most of these news programs until they get it that they should probably report on some positive things that don't have to do with Miley Cyrus or, you know, or something like that? Oh boy. You know? Well, yeah, we won't, probably won't go too far into that direction. But still, you know, if they can find some positive things. Like I always dreamed of starting a... a a, uh, a new show that dealt only with what was going on positive. In other words, saying something, well, crime is crime and there's a lot of stuff in the world that needs to be fixed. Now let's concentrate on what this child is doing or let's concentrate on what this man is doing. Let's, let's concentrate on the positive thing this woman is doing. Let's, let's concentrate on something beautiful. You know, that way people wouldn't be so stressed out. There wouldn't be so much anxiety and tension in our ranks. You know what I mean? Yeah, Kazi just sits there and nods her head once in a while. You talk and 
rant and it's awesome and people want to hear you talk they don't want to hear what i have to yes say. they do you people want to hear what cuts what do you have to say darling i think you're a dork and i think i'm <laughs> equally as dorky um rebecca says i agree that the mainstream news is crap i get my info from online podcasts i'm glad people can have podcasts and talk about things that really matter to them such as shows like this thank you awesome. very very much you're, you're right i think that more positivity needs to to be involved in the news. I mean, and can they like switch it up once in a while? You know, you get tired of looking at the same old people looking at you like this to say the no, news. They, they look like <laughs> this. They hold their sheet of paper like this. Yeah. And do this occasionally. Well, it's upside down, but. Yeah, but you don't know that. They don't, the well, viewers don't know that. And well, they, that's why people and watch. They do um, things like this. You know, I think one of the coolest people <laughs> to watch, and I wish it was really news, was. Uh, What's his name? John Stewart. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. John Stewart's awesome. You know, but <clears throat> we're not here to always talk about the news. I'm here to answer questions. So if you have any questions that have to do with the metaphysical, or the spiritual, or the paranormal, or the mystical, please ask your questions. I know that you all want to know things, and just because your friend may be sitting next to you going. Or are you really going to ask that? There's no reason for you not to ask it. I have a lot of students out there as well. I expect you all to come up with questions constantly. And I give you ample opportunity to come up with questions. So if you may be someone that is sitting out there that has wanted to ask someone that is an expert. And for those of you people out there in our New Age and Spiritual community that say, well, there's no experts in this area, there is at least one expert. I am it. And I'm pretty certain there's some more. Okay. Uh, I'm not lacking in confidence because I'm not a wishy-washy person, nor am I someone who is testing the water. I've done this long before it was cool. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions of me, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. I'll be happy to listen to your story or your experience. Oh, that reminds me. Wow. You know, can, I, can I plug in? If you'd like to give us a call, please give us a call at 207-347-5686. You can visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com backslash Ahura Z, A-H-U-R-A-Z. And you, if you're watching live, you can just send us questions through our chat room that way and uh, we will get them. I said that. You do <clears throat> give the information. You just said, you send this, send it to Facebook and people need to know the address. See, because we get to read it on this. The, I get to read it. When on you the have laptop. a question, we get, I can read it on this thing and she can read it on that laptop because it's like a little tiny letters. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see some of the responses like every once in a while, our uh, producer that's in the back, uh, Sonari, that is my wife, and she will go, um, yeah. No, she'll be. <laughs> She doesn't do that. She sends people's it says, response. It says it right there. That was because I was asking about Facebook. And oh, what's this? What, Tony asks, can Z tell us anything about the Merkaba? Well, I've told about the Merkaba before, and I think it was it Tony. No, it was someone else that asked that. Okay. Uh, I can tell you a lot, but in order for me to do that, I have to go into a really long explanation. All right. So. Okay, so if you'd like to know some more about that, you know, you have classes with me. So, uh, Tony, you're one of my students, and you know that, that if you're one of my students, I expect you to ask something that everybody can benefit from, because most people really don't know what a macabre is. I look, so, no, I, I, so it's a lot better for you to ask a question that everyone can benefit from. Now, if you're just a mainstream person and you're calling say, what is a macabre, then I can tell you some things about it and then push you to the back so that later on we can talk a little more in depth. That's the best way for you to do that. Okay, for those of you that are students, it's really important that everyone be able to ask a question that has to do not with the research thing that I've sent you on, but their own personal research as well as some of the things that you were learning. And, all right, and we have a caller on the line. We have Elise on the line, and we also have a response from Amethyst. Which one would you like first? Okay, let's go with the response from Amethyst. Amethyst says, the symbols look like a pitchfork in a circle. I see a woman staring at the rook who walks her dog every morning at 11 a.m., and that is when the odor of burnt flesh begins. She looks angry and resentful, a neighbor who seems to hold grudges and looks unhappy. Hmm. 
pitchfork with a circle. Is the pitchfork straight or is it bent? It just depends, and, and it really does matter. Um, it seems to me that you're dealing with something that's associated with anger, and anger kind of reminds you of burnt flesh, which it probably does. We have two, two people calling at the same time, and so I was just telling it's quite right. the scenario what to do. All right. <laughs> so uh, it's, the symbol it depends on are we dealing with a four-pronged pitchfork or a three-pronged pitchfork. If we're dealing with three prongs, then we're probably dealing with something that has to do with the left-hand path. Or wait, so four-pronged left-hand path, three prongs, Neptunian. So uh, I doubt seriously that it is Neptunian, so we're dealing with some kind of a dark energy. Does a person notice you? Uh, do they look at you? Do they say anything to you? I'd, I'd like to know these things because that does also matter. Uh, she, said she's, she said she's walking a dog, right? Yes. Okay, does the dog bark at all? Or what color is the dog? These all matter. Because some dogs, uh, depending on the type that they are and the color they are, can be a, used to actually enter into an astral state. in order to contact other beings. The dog? Oh yeah. Huh. yeah. I know you all think it's a cat because you saw Constantine and he held the cat while he was in the water. But do, it, uh... do that thing, <laughs> do that thing. Can you do it? Oh yeah. I bet you can do it now. <laughs> Let's see if I can do that. Into the light of dimension. <laughs> <laughs> For the longest time he couldn't reach his elbows. Yeah, well, but whatever. Now he can't, it's you know, but, inside uh, joke. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, you can actually use certain dogs. Certain dogs can assist you in uh, moving into other realms. And sometimes cats. Why dogs? Well, it's, it has to do with their, their makeup. And uh, that has to do with their, their canine feature and their guardians. Anubis. Mm hmm Maybe. Uh, but Anubis but so is something true. entirely different. Yeah, I'm sorry. Association. It, word association. No. Um, but it, it has to do more with them being a dog. It's kind of like um, uh, dogs of heaven have been often represented by greyhounds. Yet um, dogs of the other one have been operated or, or represented ironically by wolves. And I, I don't know if you all ever met a wolf, but <clears throat> wolves are not evil. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you kind of have to take your representations with a grain of salt here and there and uh, understand that they're, they have a type of a makeup. Dogs see ghosts and spirits very, very easy. And many times they'll put themselves in a guardian position to make sure that those entities don't come near their owners. You know, sometimes the dogs get overpowered, but very, very rarely. Cats, on the other end, <clears throat> can actually make themselves unseen in that particular realm. It's really quite the feature. I think that they caught on to that when they did. Uh, whoever wrote that that story, um, Alice in Wonderland, when they came up with the Cheshire Cat, knew that. Oh. You know, because that was when I saw, the first time I saw that, I knew that cats could make themselves invisible. I knew before then, but when I saw they say, yeah, that's a cat. They can make themselves invisible but they can make themselves invisible. And depending upon the type of cat and depending upon what the cat has learned or mastered, the cat can actually act like an invisible guardian. It's really quite unique. Hmm. Yeah. It's an interesting process. So, <clears throat> where were we here? Uh, Elise is on the phone. Okay, let's talk to Elise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Elise. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm um, okay. Good. You sound really good. I, um, you guys look really bright. Well, thank you. We are bright. <laughs> you have a really uh, bright light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really bright light. Um, I, have, I have a question, but um, sure. I hope that my phone is okay because it seems like the it's cutting in and out. It, yeah, I'll try yeah, well, it's rainy know? here. It's rainy here, so you may be going on. In and out. It's our phone. It's not our phone, okay. it's the weather. Okay, I'll ask the question then. Um, um, sometimes this man walks past our window in the morning, and um, I think he's one of the workers that works around here. 
and his spirit smells really horrible, almost like garbage. Okay. And every time he walks past, it makes our water from the tap and in the kitchen and in the bathroom smell horrible, just like he smells. And then all day long it smells like that, and I wonder how can I stop it from happening and how can I get rid of the smell? Okay, that's really interesting. It's really interesting that you brought that up because we have a person who's amethyst that has a situation where a woman walks by and all of a sudden she smells burnt flesh. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 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 So, you know, like I told you, it's your sensitivity and your vision. And uh, when you smell that, this is why I'm asking her for a little bit more. Now, when the when you do smell that person, do, do they look at you at all? Do they notice you? Or, or know that you're looking at them? Um, nobody's looking, I'm not looking at, I mean, I see them as I'm just cleaning or something, and they don't see me because they're carrying wood or they're carrying something to another apartment complex to make, do work. Okay. And they don't see me, but they just smell strange. Yeah, I mean, I know they interesting. smell, but I don't know why does it affect my water. I don't understand that. Well... Um, then you're dealing with someone who has a connection to an element in some way and maybe they did something to violate that element or maybe they just have some part of their energy that's just very very foul and it just emanates wherever they go so I would yeah. say that the same thing yeah. that is happening with you is similar to what this person is saying but she had symbols associated too I remember you telling me that a little while ago there were some strange symbols that um, were being pushed on you by other people. Yeah, like they look like windows. Um, they look, look sort of like rectangular windows. Okay. So obviously you guys are dealing with the same type of an entity, which may be either either terrestrial or elemental. I don't think it's extraterrestrial. I think it's terrestrial. Then it's elemental. Um, I, I just thought just the, the experiences I've had with extraterrestrials have been pretty positive and they seem to help me. I don't... Oh, I understand, but you got to understand there's two. Haven't had any negative experiences yeah. with extraterrestrials so far. But there's two different types of nature. I mean, just because you haven't had any experience with an, or what you think is a negative experience with an extraterrestrial, <clears throat> doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't. Oh. Perhaps the only ones okay. that you're you're willing to look at are the positive ones. Oh, okay. That, that that's a good point. I didn't I didn't consider that. Um, well, I don't know what to say then. Well, <laughs> well, there's not really anything too much to say about it except for your own experience. And your experience may be totally different from hers. Oh, I'm just trying um, to get out. I'm just, I'm connecting the two because the both of you seem to smell something that is very, very foul whenever this particular uh, person shows yeah, up. It, I'm sure, but there's, there's many different smells other than the ones yeah. that you have been smelling. I mean, there, I'm sure there's a plethora of different smells. I mean, and um, I'm not doubting your experience at all. I'm merely saying there's your experience is valid, and there are other experiences that could be like yours, just different. Well, there's a way to control it, though. Do you remember the, the symbol that I gave you? Yeah, I use that, I use that um, outside of our, our um, I put that on the outside of our door, and mm -hmm. I put it in the refrigerator, and it made a big difference in the refrigerator, and it made a big difference on the outside of the door. So well, you might consider I, using it on your water tap as well. That's a good idea. I did. <laughs> it works. And I'm going to make that same, you know, I want to make that same suggestion to Amethyst. Um, at some point in time, maybe you can give me a call and uh, we okay. can talk about some, uh, I'm, I'm talking to this Amethyst person at the same time as I'm holding the phone, you know, so 
uh, maybe Amethy, she can give me a call sometime and we can talk about things a little more in depth. I'd be more than happy to do that. And I can give you a symbol that you can use, okay, to ward off such oh, okay. things. And uh, same thing for you, Elise. I've given you the symbol. All you have to do is use it. Okay. Uh, I can't. Sorry, that's that's, right now. it's another caller calling okay. in. They're, they will have to, you will have to wait. Okay, hold on a second. We'll get right to you. Please wait, caller. I guess I'll, I guess I'll have to listen to the broadcast later on. Yeah, okay. okay. On Facebook. All right, I'll talk to you a little later, Elise, okay? In fact, I'm going to give you a call tomorrow, okay? Okay, oh. thanks. Have a good evening. All right, bye-bye. Here, you answer that. Uh, I think Sonari will do, take care of that. Okay. Like I said, we're still pretty new to this, so we're getting everything organized so that I'll actually be able to just press a button and then you can talk. And then I can press another button and another person can talk and so on and so on. So uh, just please be patient with us and uh, we'll get all of your questions answered. It's a really interesting experience, though, because Elise, I know, uh, does have a very sensitive uh, says the smell and she sees a lot and uh, this amethyst person um, is uh, is that your name amethyst or is it just your call sign okay so yeah that is um, experiencing something different that's similar to Elisa's so I was trying to see if they were similar mm. all right so do we have anything else uh, we have another caller coming in uh, I believe Sonari is Catching them through. All right, I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, once again talk about the event that I'll be at this Saturday, and it's in Maine. This is at Le Club Calumet in Augusta, Maine, and uh, it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'll be doing a talk or a presentation on psychic self-defense and uh, how to protect your energy and your family's energy and the energy of your home. And uh, the interest fee is five dollars, and uh, it is called the Holistic Mystic Fair, and it is this Saturday, and it promises to be a good event. There will be a lot of very talented people there. You can also get readings there. You can uh, probably get some work done, I'm let sure. Me, me, Last time there was some Reiki people and some massage people there as well. He's promoting everybody but himself, so let me help I everybody out. Myself. You You promoted your... I told your, him that I'm yes. going to be there. We're doing also going events. to be having a table with various... Uh, retail items that we sell in our store and he is also going to be offering 10 and 15 minute telepathic readings. I may. He will. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Anyways, uh, we have a caller on the line and it is Christine. Okay. Ready? Is it Chris my Christine? I believe so. Okay. Hello. 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 How are you? No. All right, how are you? I'm good. What can I do for you this evening? I was just wondering if, if you happen to get any feelings or any ideas. Um, uh, when we first moved into this apartment, my daughter at the time was probably 15 or so. Okay. Never ever had seizures before. First night we're here, she had one that lasts for five minutes. Full on grandma seizure, foaming at the mouth, the whole bit, biting the tongue, no, no breathing. We, they brought her to the ER. They put her in the su in the, the suicide room, and what? you know, discharged her. What? They were trying to say she was doing bath salts. They did drug tests. Nothing came out. What? Then. Wow. What? Then in July. What? What? That they they just assumed that she did bath salts. Yeah, yeah, because you know she's you know, attempted suicide before years ago and was at the hospital and they see the, the her color of hair was like blue at the time. They see, see the scars and they just assume she was doing drugs and that's what happened. Yeah. And they told me that she just passed out. So then this July I walk into my apartment and her girlfriend is is, is there on the floor with her and my daughter had over thirteen seizures in a row. The ambulance was called, they brought her to the ER, same thing. They put her in the suicide room, shut the door. They didn't do any vitals, that's, nothing. That's she didn't even rate them giving her a saline solution. They didn't even put the bars up in the bed. He came back in after the drug test, came back clean again, and said she was uh, passing out. 
I know seizures. My cousin has hydrocephalitis. Mm. I know what seizures are. I know what passing out is. You know, she wasn't passing out. Well, one of the... Yeah, I, I hear you. One of the symptoms of a full-blown psychic attack is seizures. So I'll ask you a, I'll ask you a couple of questions now. Yeah, I understand. I'll ask you a couple of questions now. Uh, when she does have a seizure, is there an expelling of urine? Was there what? Did she urinate on herself? I'm sorry, did she urinate on herself? Sometimes that's one of the, the properties of a seizure. Yeah, it, uh, we're getting some pretty interesting weather. Can you hear me now? On and off. Okay. Uh, sometimes a, a seizure is a product of a psychic attack. So here's what I would suggest to you. Now, uh, when was the last seizure? When did it take place last? Um, I think the last one that I know of was the other morning. Okay, the other morning? No. The other afternoon, I came in here, I, I was talking to her from my room, and she wasn't answering me, and I went out in the kitchen, and she was sitting in the chair, and her hands and her arms and her eyes were rolled in the back of her head, and then she just was full on on the ground. And it's only happened since you moved into this house? Yep. The first night we were here. Do you know the history yeah, of the house? It happened to three other people that have never had seizures before after they were at my house. I house. see. It's the house. But it's happening way more often and none of the seizure medications work and it's happening way more often she's having way more different kinds of them the after effects are that are lasting longer she can't move her legs sometimes she loses her color vision completely sometimes she can't see blues and yellows right sometimes yellows uh, greens and reds um if i might ask when is her birthday what's that when is her birthday Yes. May 23rd. May 23rd. 23 That means that she's transitory, which basically means that she might be susceptible to things of that particular nature. Okay. All right. She has had stuff like that happen. Okay. So, um, uh, you, you have a couple of options, okay? One, okay. the most obvious option that there is is to get her out of the house, okay? because it's yeah. affecting her badly and it's going to continue to affect her badly until you get uh, someone that will come down and do a full investigation and then remove that entity. Where are you located? I'm in Fairfield right now, but this has been going on w with her since a uh, traumatic experience happened. She, but she's always been kind of sensitive to things since she was like a little kid. Okay, I understand she would be susceptible to that. That would be one of the features of her her time of birth. She's a transitory vibration. Okay, and what I mean by a transitory vibration is almost in uh, a mediatory or a, a medium type of an energy. And uh, uh, she's kind of in the middle. So she, one, uh, probably naturally doesn't just sit still. And um, two, she has probably heard things all her life or seen things or whatever. And now she's all oversensitized. So whatever's in the house is actually attacking her and trying to invade her space. So I might suggest for you to get her out of the house. Uh, there, you're in Fairfield, right? So um, I think what I'm going to do <clears throat> is uh, I want you to give me a call. Uh, give us a call tomorrow, and we're going to set up an appointment to have uh, one of my colleagues come down and take a look just to see what's going on there, and then... If need be, I will come and get rid of it for you. Okay, if I have to. Okay? Yeah. In the meantime, I need for you to follow uh, some simple instructions, okay? I don't okay. need for you, there has to be some, some candlelight in that house. Do you understand? So yeah. you need to find a candle, and, and I suggest that you find a white, unscented candle and burn it in that, okay. uh, in that house, okay? And keep a candle lit as often as you can okay okay two there is a uh psalm psalms that i uh give everyone that is under a psychic attack and that is psalms 91 i might say yes 91 i suggest that you read that out loud in your home three to four times and if uh you really want it to be effective i suggest that you memorize it 
Okay. So that you can use it at any point in time. There's also another one. That would be Psalms 71. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason I give you these is because they do work. And uh, let's see, maybe I can... Is, is Fairfield towards Jamie and his crew? What's that? I'm, I'm speaking to my, my uh, assistant so. here. So let me find out. Uh, let me Okay. Ask. I, I'm not sure. Jamie might be listening. Jamie, if you're listening, I'm probably going to give you a call uh, to help the, to go and do an investigation for this woman. So, and if there's something that is really malevolent, I it probably is malevolent, but I think you can handle it. Just um, help her out, and then uh, if it gets to be too much, give me a call and I'll come down with you guys and make sure that it doesn't do any more harm because that sounds to me like I a psychic attack. I tried to uh, cleanse another apartment when she was being um, attacked in other ways, and she literally was getting attacked while I was filming what we were doing. She doesn't believe in God, so how is this going to work if she don't believe? Well, yeah. <laughs> believe doesn't she have any... Okay, belief has, doesn't have has. any... Belief has absolutely nothing to do with it. Okay? A person's belief has nothing to do with anything. Uh, she can believe or don't believe. It, it doesn't matter, but she's still being attacked. You know, I always say this. Listen, the pre-existence of a thing negates one's belief or disbelief. And unfortunately, a lot of people have been taught that their belief matters, and it really doesn't. You can very easily uh, test this theory yourself by going outside and asking yourself if the sun is shining. You can close your eyes and pretend that it's not, but that doesn't make it not shine. And even at night, if you can see stars, you have proof that the sun is still shining, and your belief really doesn't matter. Well, the existence or the pre-existence of God really doesn't depend itself on your belief. You okay, because I've hers. always been taught that, you know, you could believe in a turd and it would work if you believe in it enough. And if you didn't believe, then it wouldn't work. Well, I mean, you know, I believe. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, know you know, I have people say that kind of thing all the time. Those are usually people that, that don't have uh, any type of a relationship with the spiritual and don't have a gift. So they don't want anybody else to have a gift. You know, so they'll say very crass things like that. And unfortunately, you get some people that are actually involved in the teaching of another person that has to do with spirituality or religion that poisons the very minds of other people. So, you know, when it comes to these particular things, one of the things that I do is straighten a person out and let them know, listen, everything that there is at one point in time was not here. And, you know, I've always said this, I'm really a supporter of the Big Bang Theory. However, I understand that somebody, somebody had to light the fuse. You know, so uh, your daughter's belief really doesn't matter. You know, she, and for a person that, and you know, I point this out a lot, you know, for a person to say that they don't believe in God, especially atheists, I love atheists. You know, when an atheist says that they don't believe in God, then I ask them, then why argue about something that you say you don't believe in? Why actively disbelieve in something you don't believe in? It doesn't make any sense. And, and you can't be mad at something you don't believe in either, I guess. Exactly, you can't. You can't be mad at something you don't believe in. You know, so uh, the bottom line is this. Uh, what works, works. Whether a person believes that it works or not, that's irrelevant. You know, so... Uh, I'll, you know, hopefully Jamie's listening. If he's not, I'll deliver a message to him. And if you give me a call tomorrow, I'll actually hook the two of you up, okay? Okay. Okay, good, because the weather's really messing the phone up at this point. Yeah, they are the East Coast Ghost Trackers, and uh, they're one of the groups that I actually endorse. Uh, and they are good at investigation. And um, my job is to go in and remove what is troubling you. And uh, you probably want what's going on documented. As far as, you know, the doctors, they, they are trained not to incorporate things that are of a wider spectrum. So you got to, you know, have a little patience with them. They don't know any better. You know, so I, I understand you're a mother and it really ticks you off that someone wouldn't be taking your daughter seriously or your daughter's life seriously. I get that. But understand that they they don't really have the faculty to deal with such things. 
I've always been supportive, you know, and stuff like that because she just was always amazing since she was a little kid about stuff, you know, mm -hmm. about stuff she shouldn't have known about and, you know, and things like that. And at such a young age, things I didn't even know about until she brought it up. I'm sure that I'm I'm sure that she's very amazing, and um, you know that energy that twenty three five energy is is very very transitory and is very very meteoric so a mediumic so um, she's she has a predilection for these types of things and if she can get it trained, uh, not only will she be able to to stop her seizures but she'll be able to deal with things without any type of an attack. Yeah, be able to protect herself. Yeah, she'll be able to protect herself and others. Okay, so in, yep. so we'll get you help. Okay, uh, so okay. If, in the meantime, just just do what I told you to do. It'll work fine. Okay, and uh, let me know what happened tomorrow. Okay. Yep, I will. Okay, pleasure speaking I really to you. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Sent Jamie a message. Okay, good. <clears throat> so. Um, that's really interesting, you know. So uh, if you're going through something similar to that, or or you know someone that's going through things that are similar, to that, you can give us a call. And uh, if I can't get down there to you, I have some contacts that can get down to you. Okay, I'd be, that'd be more than happy to um, uh, hook you all up. All right. Now, uh, are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Okay. Actually, what do you got for me? Uh, let me see. Backtrack here. Rebecca asks, I once felt like I had a dog spirit visit me. It happened after a hike. He walked everywhere with me, and at night, just as I was drifting asleep, I would feel something jump on the bed and curl up at my feet. I thought I was imagining it until my husband mentioned feeling the same thing. Mm. Then one night I felt bad. Then one night I felt bad, like it was stuck here. So I gave it permission to leave if it wanted to, and it did. It never felt bad. It was kind of pleasant when it was here. I just wanted to know if this is common for spirits to hang around for a while. Yes, very common, especially animals, because um, they want uh, <clears throat> they want to make sure that you're okay. You know, your animal, even you know, uh, when they're here, they always like to make sure that their owners are okay. You know, they they like to make sure that the people that are here are, are okay. And dogs have a strange predilection for that. Um, as you can all no doubt tell, I'm a dog person. I have a cat, but, you know, I'm partial to dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I know the nature of them. They always want to make sure that you're okay, no matter what. You know, so it's very common. And other animals have that, that uh, way of being, too. They won't leave until they think that you're going to be okay. So it's quite common. J just the same as it is for... Uh, people that are loved ones to make sure, okay, you're going to be okay, I'm going to go now, you're going to be okay. You know, so, uh, yeah. That's actually quite cool. Alright, so I hope that helps you out. What have you... Uh, well, we heard back from Jamie, and he says, yes, they can go to, the East Coast Ghost Trackers can go to Fairfield, Maine, uh, for you, Christine, and he would like for you to please email him at East Coast Ghost Trackers at yahoo.com. That's awesome. I guess they're they're out of power up north. Oh, they are. Yeah, he's. Okay, so that's uh, East Coast Ghost Trackers at yahoo.com, yahoo and uh, uh, the crew is a good crew. They'll make you feel comfortable. You'll feel safe. Uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, get you some help right away. Now, um, Jamie, if it comes down to um, me having to go, uh, let me know, okay? And uh, we'll go down and we'll we'll deal with things in tandem, okay? All right. I <clears throat> don't know if he's watching because, like I said, they're out of power, but I will relay the message to him. That's fine. Uh, next question is, why do you prescribe songs for people experiencing psychic attack if they are not Christian? What if they're uh, not Christian? Excuse me. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with whether they're Christian or not. The Psalms have to do with any person that is open or, have, or needs protection. That particular Psalm is a Psalm of banishment and protection. And it works quite well. <clears throat> you actually invoke uh, not only the power of God, but you, well, 
there is no other power to me. That to you, there can be lots of other powers. That's fine. But you, you ask for the power of God, and you ask for the power of God in the form of his angels that have charge over you. And uh, God, God is they're the same to me. Um, you, it doesn't mention anything to do with your belief, nor does it even suggest anything to do with your belief. <laughs> you know, it has more to do with what is available to you. So yeah, I'll tell people to do that whether they're Christian or not. I don't care if they're Buddhist or not. I really don't care which uh, belief they have or even if they're just a scientist. I don't care. I know what works. And you know, you're supposed to give a person what works, not what they believe in. Okay, so uh, this is why I do that. That particular psalm has been with me for, let's see, I first learned of it when I was maybe nine and it serves me every single time. It's a very powerful song. And it begins, uh, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my rock and my refuge, and God will I trust. So, it's a very, very powerful thing. You know, so it works. That's why I give it to them. I even use it when I'm doing... Uh, uh, my forms of exorcism depending upon the magnitude that I have to deal with you know so there you go hope that helps you out and my dog is snoring can you believe that my dog is snoring Ling is snoring it's really loud you sound like a like old guy <laughs> you know snoring up a storm okay are there any other questions at all uh no Okay, um, what, what's our time like? It is, oh, sorry, we have a response from Rebecca. She says, I found it once by accident, and it was so helpful. Took away all fear, and I'm not even one to read the Bible. Mm. You know, there's a lot to be said about such, such things. You know, there are people who read the Bible. There are people that don't read the Bible. There are people that read the Bible with a purpose, and the reason that they read the Bible is because of their, part of their faith. And then there are others that, that don't believe the Bible, simply because uh, of what religion has done or certain religions have done or their experiences in a religion. Listen, I agree. There's a lot of things that is in that book that is called the Bible that were pure fabrications and just done as part of a political or social regime. That people were gathered in a room and told, write this or else. I get it. I understand that. But you also have to understand that even with all of that writing and all of the fabrication, there's a sliver of truth in there. And that is what I concentrate on. And that is what you should concentrate on. You can read any of the holy, quote, holy books, and you will find the exact same element. You will find that every one of them has a, a piece of the truth. Maybe what happened with that piece of the truth wasn't great. But it was still valid. The truth is to the truth no matter what it is or what form that it comes in. You know, so I give them those things that I know that are tried and true. And for those of you that have used that, such as Rebecca, you understand the validity of it as well. Um, there are some people that say, well, you know, if you add sugar and water, you wind up getting something entirely different. And you're absolutely right. But it's still water. And it's still sugar. And those components are still there no matter what you do. You know, so um, I, I get it. I understand that uh, many people are very unhappy religion, with religion. As a matter of fact, it has been religion <clears throat> that has caused many people to turn away from God. Or many people to be afraid of God. Many people to not want to have to deal with God. I understand or to deal with the God. As there's been the travesty that, that, that or the, the atrocity that has happened to many, many women that had magnificent gifts that uh, were coming up. They were labeled witches and, and evil and things just because they had these wonderful gifts. And the people, the men that loved them, they were slaughtered. I get all of that. I know the stories. However... Those things that are valid and true are valid and true, regardless of what you're unhappy with. I, myself, am very Christ-centered. 
but I understand what Christ is. Yes, I know that God exists. And yes, I know that the goddess exists. Yes, I know that Christ exists. It's not a matter of believing anything. So if I don't believe in anything like that, why then should I promote a person's belief? Or do anything to disregard a person's belief? I deal with knowledge. I go from accepting something to finding out what it is and knowing what it is. And we should all do that. But in order for you to do that, you've got to open a few books here and there. I'm not telling you that you have to read the Bible. I'm only telling you that if you're given something that you that has the possibility of helping you, don't you at least owe it to yourself to, to investigate it? I don't like castor oil either, but I know that it serves a purpose. <laughs> you know, so you deal with the things the way that they need to be dealt with. Remember, your belief isn't what matters. It never is what matters. It's just what you do, what you think, what you feel. Common sense matters. Logic matters. Vision matters. Ability matters. Regaining your peace matters. And I will pull every single thought from every single book, from every single walk of life, from every experience that I've had and every experience that has been recounted to me. I will pull from any one of those if I think that it will help you. And I'm pretty good at it. That's why I do that. I hope that helps you. Anything else? Uh, no, I just heard back from Jamie and can set okay. that up. <clears throat> Good. So, uh, for those of you that are with us, please tell your friends. Uh, we'll be doing this every Wednesday night. And uh, I like doing this show. And I'm sure that you all enjoy the show. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Just remember, if you can't think of something you know, right away, write it down so that you can have it stored. Okay? We have had a wonderful time. We always do. This has been Ask the Unicorn. I'm Ahura Z. This is Nirakazi. And uh, this has been episode 24. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week. And yeah, I will see you next week. <laughs> okay. Good night, all.